frenemies. Anyway, uh, Craig, what would you do with shares of PayPal here? Well, look at PayPal, and we're still 76% off of the all-time highs. We've been essentially stuck in a trading range. Uh, the lower end of the range is around 71, upper end is 78. If I look at the options market, the applied option move coming into the move tonight, it suggests that we're still not going to break out of this range. So I view this from a technical perspective as really just a hold in here at this point in time. And uh, I think that there's probably stock... Again, I'll just add that you're also below the declining 200-day moving average. So the stock's not trending well, just sort of been sideways in here. I'd call it a hold, stuck in the range on the print. And, that, Christina, that's interesting, by the way, that Visa has announced this partnership. You know, everyone trying to figure out who is disintermediating, disintermediating whom. And they all seem to make partnerships, so you can't escape anybody. They're all linked together. Exactly. And the fact that you saw with Visa and MasterCard that there was still some strength. So they're talking about this partnership. They're stealing market share. So then who is left to, to lose that market share? Right. And so hopefully it's not PayPal in this case. Right. All right. We'll leave it there. Thank you, uh, Christina. Christina Parts and Evelis. And we'll turn our attention to Lucid, whose shares are down 5 percent or so. Well, they've paired that into the print. Uh, last month, they produced more than 2,000 cars at their facility in Arizona. They delivered 1,400 vehicles during the first quarter. And the SEC closed its investigation into Lucid last week. For more, let's bring in our Phil LeBeau. Hi, Phil. What are you watching? Kelly, it comes down to production, cash burn, and liquidity. And on the production side, you talked about the first quarter production. The question is, what are they going to say about 2023 full-year production? Previous guidance was 10,000 to 14,000 vehicles. Does it look like they're going to be able to keep that? In terms of cash burn, look, they're expected to post another quarterly loss. But the question is, liquidity-wise, they had $4.9 billion at the end of last year. They said at the time, look, that's enough to get us through the first quarter of 2024. Is that still the outlook? Or have things improved or deteriorated? That's what people are going to be focused on when they report, report the results after the bell. Craig, are you a buyer here? be a buyer here just from the perspective this is not a fundamental call to be clear but if i step back and i just look at the chart we've been in a downtrend for an extended period of time but when i come back and i look to the quarterly previous quarterly earnings prints <clears throat> the average move has been around 13 percent the options market is suggesting that we could see about a 6.6 percent .6 implied move in here i think it's call it a trade at this point in time call it a trading buy uh, into the print and as uh, expectations, uh, as Phil has mentioned, are extremely negative in here. Uh, if they don't come out as negative as they expected, with a very high short interest of about 22 percent, there could be a short, uh, short squeeze here with the stock creating a trading opportunity. But again, to be clear, it's not a long-term hold, sure. just a trading buy. Yeah, and we're just below about $8 a share going into that. Phil, an indication of sentiment is the question I'm going to ask you is, how are there still so many players? You know, why hasn't there been more consolidation? This is an incredibly capital-intensive business. Borrowing costs, as we now know, are through the roof. Um, are people just kind of waiting this out to see who can make a go of it in the next couple of years? Yes. Yes, exactly. They've got enough liquidity that nobody has been forced to the point of pain of saying, I can't do it. We give up. Is there a combination with another automaker out there? So you've got a number of these companies. And this week we get the pure EV startups, whether you're talking about Lucid today. Tomorrow we'll hear from Fisker. Mm -hmm. After the bell tomorrow, we hear from Rivian. The question is, where are these guys in terms of their liquidity? They're going to make it through this year. What happens in 24 and 25? That's really the question. The, the, the established automakers, Kelly, they, they've got more than enough uh, liquidity and capital to last for a long time. We're not going to see any consolidation in that, in that area anytime soon. As we show the stocks, uh, Rivian, Fisk, obviously Tesla, Craig, do any of them, I'm thinking about Tesla in particular, jump out at you as uh, exhibiting you know, something you want to strongly buy or sell at this point? No, I mean, when I look at a chart of Tesla, it still looks to be on a longer term chart, still to be a distributional looking chart. Uh, not been a big fan of the uh, the EV companies at this point in time. I think it's just going to take more time. And again, a little bias living here in Minnesota, not great vehicles when it's 20 below zero. No, and it's that way for what, six, seven months out of the year sometimes? Uh, Phil Some people think longer. Right, except my brother's there as well, so I believe me, I get the updates. Uh, Phil, thank you. Our Phil Lebeau will see you in a few more minutes. And we'll finish out here with Warner Music Group. I almost said Warner Brothers. Uh, it's been a rough year for Warner Music Group, down 20%. Morgan Stanley's bullish, though, saying they continue to see streaming music and audio as an attractive growth market. They've got an overweight rating. And the company disclosed a big AI bet back in 2020. Uh, and, Julia, they've already been using it, I guess, to file a bunch more lawsuits, which seems like the natural use of AI in America. Uh, what do you, uh, Julia Borson, I should add, is here with us. What are you watching for in the results? 
Well, I think the interesting thing about this quarter for Warner Music Group is that the top and bottom line results are expected to be pretty much in line with where they were last year, within 1% um, on both the top and bottom line. But what's much more important here is what we learned from the company about its digital revenue and about its subscription revenue in particular. Are they seeing meaningful increase in growth in that subscription revenue growth as, of course, so much of the mu music industry has shifted to the subscription services such as Apple Music and Spotify? The second key thing we're looking for here is an update on the ad supported music subscription market. There's a lot of talk about weakness in the ad market. The question is, what are they seeing there? Are they seeing the ad market stabilizing, which is the term that Mark Zuckerberg used, or how do they see that moving forward?